Problem number four is the largest palindrome product. And if we just take a look at the description, it says a palindromic number reads the same both ways. So for example, 9009 is one of them because it's 90 this side, 90 this side, and it reads 9009 forwards and backwards. And it says the largest palindrome number made from the product of two two digit numbers is 9009. So we have 91 and 99, which are both two digit numbers. And if we multiply them together, we get 9009. And the problem right here is uh, find the largest palindrome made from the product of two n-digit numbers. And the official problem right here is for three-digit numbers. So we're going to have to solve this right here. And this is the function that we're going to be implementing. So let's do that. So I'll say let um, largest palindrome product. And what we take in here is a number of digits. So I'm just going to put a number of digits like this. This is going to be our function. And then to check our solution, what, what we can have here is we can say console.log, um, something like result is, and then we can call our function, and we can do it with three, since that's what we need to solve. Or well, let's do it with two, because we already know the answer. So, so this is our function right here. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing that it says here is that um, it wants the largest value of something. So the first thing we want to do, and it says the largest uh, largest product, I guess, because it's made from the products. So well, the first thing we want to do is just set up a variable to track this. So I'm just going to say that largest product equals zero, and we'll start it off at zero. And what we want to do at the end of our function is to return the largest product like this. And just to verify that this is working, um, I'm just going to pull up a terminal and just um, try executing this so far. Um, let's do this here. So node demo. And yeah, we can see that zero has been returned right here so far. So in terms of how we're going to go about doing this, um, we're taking in the number of digits right here. So the first thing we want to do is basically generate, I guess, a range of numbers that we're going to try multiplying the numbers between. So for example, if we had two digit numbers, the range of numbers would be between 10 and 99. Or if we had three digit numbers, the range would be between 100 and 999. If we had four digit, it would be from 1000 to 9999. So we want to set up a range like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is create two variables, i and j, and these are just for um, iterating through some loops. You'll see these uh, being used throughout. And the first thing we want to do is determine our starting value. And what we can do here is we can say let a starting value string equals 1 like this. And the reason we start with a 1 is every starting value um, we'll always begin with a 1. So for example, um, for one digit, we'll start with 1. For two digits, we have 100, which also starts with a 1. For three digits, we have um, 1000, which also starts with a 1. And then what we can do here is say we can say for um, i equals 1, i is less than number of digits, i plus plus. So this will run number of digit times minus one. And what we just want to do here is we want to say starting value string. Um, actually, let's change this to start value string because I don't see the point of this. Start value string equals start value string plus zero. So basically what this does is it adds on the appropriate number of zeros right here. So for example, um, let's say that uh, we were starting, we had a three digit number, and so we want to set our start value to um, 100 in this case. So we'll start with one. This will run number of digits minus two times. So this will run two times and it will add on two zeros at the end, like this. And finally, the, what we want to do here is say we want to say let um, start value equals, and then we can just change this string into an integer so we have our starting value like this. So the next thing that we can do here is we can also have a finish value and we can say let finish value actually um, 
yeah, we can create a string here called for the fin finish value. And we can just set this to start value string plus um, another zero like this. Because remember that um, remember that if if we were doing three digit numbers, for example, um, we could have start value string, which is 100 as a string. Then if we, if we add another zero, we get 1000. And then what we can do here is say, we can say that finish value equals uh, pass int. So we can pass the um, 1000 into a string here and we can take away one. So this should get us back down to 999. So again, we have a starting value string, which is 100. We add another zero to get a thousand, and then we set the finishing value to a thousand to take away one. So we get up to 999. And what I'm just going to do here is say something like a uh, range of values to use is, and then I can do start value. And what I can say is something like two and then finish value like this. So this should hope once I log this, this should hopefully make a bit of a bit more sense. Um forgot the plus here. So let's try running this so far. And we can see that the range of values to use is 10 to 999 since we're doing two digit numbers. If I were to change this to three three digit numbers we can see that we get 100 to 999. So whatever range of number of digits we have, we now have the correct range of numbers that um, we can multiply it together, basically. So we have all, we have the range of two digit or three digit or four digit numbers right there. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is basically finding the products of all the num all the combinations of numbers that we can have within our range and if it's bigger than our largest product found so far we want to make sure that we update it so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start a for loop here and I'm going to say um, I equals start value um, let's see we want to finish this when I is uh, less than the finish value or less than or equal to since our finish value is um, 999 or 99 or whatever. And we want to make sure that we increase i by 1 on each iteration. So this will basically iterate starting from 10. It'll go 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up to 99. Or it will start from 100, 100, and 102, all the way up to 999. And then what we want to do here is say we want to say um, 4, and then we'll have integer j here and then j can be start value plus one um, and we want to run this till j is less than finish value and we can say um, j plus plus here so this will also do the same thing as before but we also have another variable so the first combination we'll have here is we'll have um, 10, so I will be 10 and J will be 11, then I will be 10 and J will be 12, then I will be 10 and J will be 13, and then finally we'll move I to 11 and then J will start from 12, 13 onwards. So this is how we generate, so each time inside this loop, whatever, the pro, whatever I and J are, I and J will be two unique values that we can multiply together. And then we can actually take away one from here because um, because of the way these loops work. So the next thing we want to do is we want to calculate the product at each stage. So we want to say let product equals i times j. And now we have a product, but we need a way to check if it's a palindrome or not. Remember the palindrome products have to be read the same forwards and backwards. And the easiest way to do that is to just create a function that will take in a string and check if it's a palindrome and then we can par we can change this into a string and then feed it to the function to basically check this. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to create a function here called is palindrome and it's going to take in a string and what it's just going to be doing is it's basically going to put the string backwards and then check if the backward string and the forward string are the same thing. So I'm going to say let backward string equals and then we can say string dot split at this 
So this basically creates an array with all the characters of the string. And then we can say the reverse method, which then reverses this array. And so now we have all the characters backwards in an array. And then if we do join with an empty string like this, we'll join that reverse array together. So this will essentially create the backwards version of whatever string we take in here. And then what we can say is say if string is equal to backwards string, then we can return true here. Otherwise, um, what we can do is return false. So again, this function, all it does is it checks if any given string is a palindrome like this. And then what we want to basically do here is that if the product is a palindrome and it's larger than the product we found so far, we just want to set this to the largest product. So we, what we can say is if pal is palindrome and we can say product a dot to string here because we remember this method needs it to be a string and so if it is a palindrome and um, product is greater than our largest product so far then we just want to make sure that we set the largest product to product like this and at the end again we return the largest product so again what this will do is this will go through all the com possible combinations of numbers in that given range it will multiply them together and if it's a if if the result is a palindrome and it's larger than our largest product found so far we'll update our largest product right here then we'll return it so now that we've got it kind of completed let's test it first so if it two it should return 9009 so let's do that now and we can see that 9009 has been returned right here um, another one is we could have it for three and let's copy that and oops let's try with this one sorry um, so we need to try it with three here and if I run this we can see that 906 609 has been returned right here so Again, I'll just talk about uh, the logic of this code. So firstly, we'll determine the starting and finishing values by uh, adding the appropriate number of zeros. And then what we'll do is we'll go through each number combination within those values and we'll multiply them together. And if the product is a palindrome and the product is larger than our current product, we'll set that to our largest product. And this, that's essentially how this function works. And to check if a string is a palindrome, we just have this function right here, which puts splits the string, reverses the array, and then joins it um, back together and then checks if the backward string and the forward string are the same. So now that we have all of that, we can just go ahead and um, paste that into here and submit it and uh, if we go ahead and run the tests now uh, don't worry about the potential infinite loop it will still complete and as you can see it's passed successfully and we can submit it and move on and in terms of the official problem we'd have to find the largest palindrome made up of three digit numbers and if we put three into our function right here and we execute it we can see that the result right here is available and you can go ahead and submit this and fingers crossed it should work um, again if you need this function explained or anything like that just leave a comment and I will try my best but as you can see this has passed successfully and we now have problem 4 completed